Before starting to build our player, first we are going to create our custom reusable slider component. Let's open up our project. Inside the components folder, we will create a new folder and call it slider. Inside, we are going to store all the slider related code. Let's create an index.js file and slider.view and slider.scss. Let's export the default from our slider view. Inside the slider, let's create the template and put some div for now. And we're gonna create the script and we're gonna give a name of slider. Inside the div, we're gonna render a text so that we can see something on the screen. And in the app view, let's for now comment out this player component and render there our slider. So we will write our component in full isolation. Let's comment out this player import and replace the player with the slider import, register that component and render it in the template. Let's go back to browser. Yeah, as you can see, our slider component is successfully rendered on the screen. Before going any further, let me open the final player so that we can get some references on how the slider is actually built. Here is our final player. Let's inspect the document. Let's select our slider. So you see that it's very simple actually. It has a simple wrapper. Inside we have the actual bar. Inside the bar we have our fill and the handle. And that's it. Very simple. We are going to create the exact same structure in our slider. So let's go back to our code. Let's remove this text. Now let's add a slider class to our wrapper. And inside we're gonna create that bar. Let's give it a class of slider bar. Inside the bar we have the handle. Let's give it a class of slider handle. And down here we're gonna create the fill. Let's give it a class of slider fill. By the way, we can self-close these div tags if they don't have any content inside. Nice. Now, let's import our styles. Let's type import slider scss. Let's open our styles. And we are going to target our slider wrapper. First thing I'm going to set is 100% width so that it always occupies the full width of its parent. We're gonna set display flex and align items center to align everything inside our slider in the middle. In our case, we are aligning our bar vertically in the center. Now let's target our bar and give it a 100% width as well and give a height, for example, 4 pixels. We will give it a test background color, for example, CCC. Let's check what we've got so far. So here is our gray bar. Now we're gonna style the handle. Let's target it. I'm gonna set 16 pixel width and 16 pixel height. Let's add a border radius, 50%, to make it a circle. Let's give it a black background color for now. All these colors are just for testing purposes and we're gonna fix all of those when we actually start building the player and the toolbar. Now let's set position absolute. Let's set left 0. In top, we are going to set calculate 50% minus 8 pixels. It will align it exactly in the middle. So we are offsetting 50% from the top and then minusing half of the handle's height, which will position it exactly in the middle. 
let's check what we've got. You can see that handle is offset to the left, which means it's not positioning itself relative to the bar. So we need to set position relative to our bar. Now let's add a cursor pointer to our slider so that whenever we hover, we know that it's an interactable element. Inside the slider, let's write cursor pointer. Now let's add a height to our slider so that we have some room to work. So let's add 24 pixels. And now if we hover over, we get this nice cursor. We are going to stop at this point and in the next video, we will start actually implementing the functionality.